Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a new K-Bar from State and Union. I get my hands on the Tempest Pinion, and we go deep in fullers and opening holes. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Non Nobis Solum. I forgot to look that up. My dad could probably tell me what that means. Uh, and he left this comment on my unboxing of the Manticore X from Heretic Knives. He says, personally, I'd rather have a price cut on the product and skip the fancy packaging. No shade on this particular product intended, but all that stuff costs money and I'd rather just have the food than the fancy plate and silverware, so to speak. And I hear you, non nobis solum. Uh, I sometimes agree with that, but I must say there is something to be said for the experience of cracking open a box uh, and and wading through the stuff to get to the knife. Now, the comment was left uh, on the knife, uh, the unboxing video for which this is the box. And to me, uh, it did not seem uh, too overdone. Uh, it just has a little foam insert. They give you some lubrication, which is nice for the out the front. And, uh, you know, not much to it. I think there's a birth card down in there or something something similar. Uh, but it's interesting. We all have our own uh, our own perspectives. Uh, as Jim and I were talking right before we rolled, the Jack Wolf knives, uh, kni knives come packaged very intri intricately and with a lot of cool ancillary stuff. And that's part of the experience. And that's that's what the maker intended. And uh, so it, it is an interesting thing. Some people just toss the box. I keep all the boxes now. I used to lecture my wife about boxes. She kept boxes for appliances, you know, like the air fryer box. Like, what do we need that for? Uh, but we know we need our knife boxes because we might be selling them or we might not. That's that's probably more like it in my case. But you want to move them along with the box. And when you buy a knife on the secondary market, you do like to get the box with it just in case you want to move it along. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, thanks for the comments and thanks for uh, watching and uh, liking the videos, everybody. Okay, today's pocket check. Excuse me. I just had a delicious pasta meal. Uh, today's pocket check, an A2D mercantile. That's attention to detail mercantile. Uh, Mark one. This is the large. This is one of uh, Douglas Espo Esposito's very first locking folders. And uh, I saw it while he was on one of our shows here on one of the... Uh, town halls and he showed this off and i fell in love with the uh inlay that full frame inlay of beautiful old it looks like westinghouse micarta i don't think it is uh, but it looks like that caramel caramel westinghouse micarta beautifully inlaid using a panograph uh so this is all done with old school tools he now has cnc and Everything's on bearings and everything is super smooth. This this is definitely an early work, but I love it. And it is an absolute tank. And I didn't really think about this when I uh, chose this knife today, uh, but it fits perfectly in the um, main theme of the show today, which is opening holes and fullers. I've been just not discovering, but sort of really glorying in some of these knives that come with multiple uh, opening methods and... Uh, the fuller and the opening slot or hole, the non-circular hole. I do like the circular hole, but in that case, we're just talking about spider coast pretty much. Um, but so uh, anyway, that's why I chose, not why I chose this. I happen to choose this because I've been carrying automatics like mad since they've gone, uh, uh, since they've become legal here in my state. And uh, I basically wanted the opposite and, and uh, no, uh, Certainly no offense to Douglas, because uh, he's an amazing knife maker and an amazing guy. Uh, but this is one of his early knives and um, just not as smooth as his later knives. And so it's interesting to go from uh, a bunch of super slick automatics where you press a button, and the thing flies open to something that's a little less. Um, I'm not going to say refined because this is pretty refined, but a little less uh user friendly let's say because it 
uh it's a little stiff but uh man i love this thing uh my second custom folder and it remains my second custom folder I just had a conversation with uh, Matthew Christensen yesterday. It'll be up uh, in a couple of weeks here, and or maybe it's this week. Is it this week, Jim? Uh, at, it's this week, and uh, he's a great guy. And he isn't—he is someone whose custom knives I might be willing to get rid of a number of things to to purchase. But I'm not—I'm not—I'm uh, not even going to think about that right now because I need to think about other things. Like this Jack Wolf Knives Midnight Jack. Did you like that? Did you like how I segued? Uh, this Midnight Jack is the newest release from uh, Jack Wolf Knives. And let's see, as you are hearing this, uh, this is being released. And uh, this is the mid July release 2022 of this gorgeous coffin handled Barlow. A bar Barlow is a traditional slip joint style knife and that has uh, a an extra large long fuller for extra side stability and um, incidentally or or because of that they also have slightly longer tangs uh, which fit in those longer bolsters and that just gives everything uh, more rigidity especially side to side and Barlow's have traditionally been known as working uh, knives knives that working uh, working men used uh, back in the day. And uh, this is uh, a just a beautiful representation. And my first fancy Barlow. I have a couple of uh, Rough Riders, which I like very much. Uh, but this is my first fancy legit Barlow. The others are legit, but you know what I mean. Uh, this one has the fully integrated uh, integral titanium bolster and liner on both sides of that beautiful steel spring, which positively matches up with the blade you you don't see it you can barely see a seam right from that angle you can't feel it at all the fit and finish on these jack wolf knives is second to none i gotta say it it's they uh, they really they're precision made uh using the the most high-tech machines um and then they are hand finished by artisans who know what the hell they're doing and man you can really you can really tell uh, the walk and talk on these things are insane, especially uh, this one is especially nice and stout, which I appreciate. I've heard other people like Knife Thoughts, and he is definitely a uh, Knife Thoughts on YouTube. He's definitely a um, slip joint aficionado. He knows what he's talking about. But his was a, he, he called his a five. I would call mine more of a seven pull. Or maybe six and a half. I don't know, but that's sort of like the the lockup percentage. This is about 35, 37 percent lockup. I don't know. Uh, but I guess it's all, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. But to me, this feels more like a this is a little more stout than the other ones. It feels more like a seven to me or so. Uh, all these Jack Wolf knives ha have a very nice pull and excellent action, excellent walk and talk. And uh Man, this one has absolutely, oh, it's won me over, you know, uh, that each one as they come out, I'm like this, I think this will be my favorite of all. And then the next one comes out and I'm like, oh, but I love a boy's knife. This will be my favorite. And then this one comes out. Oh my gosh, but that sheep's foot blade is incredible. And a coffin handle. I love a coffin handle, just like a Bowie knife, that coffin handle. So cool beautifully shaped. And uh, if you're a slip joint nerd, you will appreciate the fact that it is just so fully flat uh, on the lock bar in the half, uh, half stop position. Oh, this thing is awesome. I have oiled the micarta a little bit, but uh, through use, basically I've rubbed the oil out, so it will have to naturally take. Oh, I'm sorry. I also forgot to mention, if you're a slip joint nerd, you will also appreciate the triple fluting in that bolster if ever it will there you go triple fluting in that bolster what a nice looking knife that is oh love that love the swedge on top <clears throat> can't say enough about these jack wolf knives uh and then my emotional support knife today uh just for flipping and feeling good while working uh was the asticus <laughs> i yep Still can't can't not laugh when I say Asticus. It is funny. I mean, you know, someone named it to sound 
it's funny because it's funny, uh, but a super thin blade and then super hollowly ground. So it's very, very, very thin. I mean, it is a really, you know how some Civivis are extra thin. I think this is one of them that grind here. Maybe you can hear it. Listen, sometimes you can just tell it sounds like a straight razor. It is very sharp. It also has exquisite action. This was a Christmas gift 2019, I believe, Christmas gift. Uh, 20, 2019 Christmas gift from my brother-in-law. I know you're like, it doesn't matter, Bob. Quit, But it matters to me. Uh, not only if I can remember the date, it's only because it's associated with uh, a knife. Uh, that's how I remember things. A knife, a good meal, um, or what I was actually seeing with my eyes at the moment. Uh, this is a great emotional support knife. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's also a great knife if you actually want to use it and work with it um it's very thin it's very easy to carry around it's about a four inch blade so it gets it has a nice long cutting edge a full swedge for your finger uh up there so you are good to go with this knife uh that's the civivi asticus and this is my pocket check for today i was carrying the a2d mark one the large uh an early model and uh, i was carrying the jack wolf knives midnight jack and then, of course, the Civivi Asticus. What were you wearing? Yeah, wearing. See, there, but that, that was a Freudian slip. What were you carrying and using today? Not wearing frivolously like a garment. Uh, but what were you carrying and using today? Uh, let me know down in the comments or call the listener line, 724-466-4487. And let me know. Also, you might be interested. We have a knife drawing coming up, and uh, we're going to announce what that knife is on Thursday Night Knives this week. Uh, but we have a drawing coming up for the Gentleman Junkie uh, this month, and uh, I'm going to let you know what that is. So if you're interested in being a part of that, you do have to be a part of the crew on Patreon. Uh, go over there. Just check out what we have to offer. We offer a little bit more than you get right here, like a little bit of extra content from uh, interviews and stuff, and you can get uh, entered into a monthly knife drawing. Uh, check us out at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that is thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spyderco, Wii, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel, and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Seeing that Bastinelli in that last ad, boy, it made me think of my diagnostic. <sighs> anyway, okay, so next up, we're going to take a look at a couple of knives in the news. And the first one is from our good friend KC at the Knives Fast channel. Well, you know KC, he's been on this show, and he's got a great channel, which I know you probably all go to he's got great lives uh, which he invited me on once we had a great time it was awesome uh casey's a great guy a virginian also who is now happily carrying automatic knives but in addition to that he is now carrying his very own tempest pinion the tempest pinion he has these prototypes and he just sent one to me which we will show off in a few minutes uh but the pinion is very exciting it looks like uh, uh he's well on his way to having this one funded Please be sure to go check out his uh, his uh, website and you can get on the pre-order. I did the moment it dropped on Sun. It was this past Sunday. Uh, I got on that drop and I got the black micarta version. I really do like this uh, uh, Thunderhead Blue G10, but man, whenever given the choice for micarta, I will opt for it. It was only like five five dollars more. Uh, but this is a really uh, uh, really great knife. Uh, and, and here, I'm going to try and stick to the article. I'll tell you my feelings about the knife a little later on, but it is uh, going to be in 14 C 28. And the, uh, right now the uh, prototypes are in OS 10. He wants them in 14 C 28. And, and uh, aside from that, it's got a 
really useful blade he's calling a drop sheep a drop sheep blade you can see that uh it it does have a bit of a drop point uh profile on the top but it definitely drops down into a nice sort of sheep's foot slash worn cliff style knife an excellent excellent user knife for um any sort of utility purpose for sure you have that nice long almost straight uh, bit of cutting edge that comes at a nice little angle downward from the handle uh, but it has a rounded off a uh, little bit of a belly at the tip similar to the 940 but i will have you know it has a much nicer in my opinion uh geometry and uh, the one that i have in my hot little hands is uh full uh full uh, not full flat ground just flat ground and I cannot remember if he said he was going to change the grind on this knife. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter because uh, the grind that's on it right now is awesome. Uh, the OEM, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to reveal, so I'll, I'll just keep that under my hat for the moment. Uh, but very, very exciting knife from Tempest Knives. If you remember the prototype uh, we had here, uh, the P51... Uh, no, wait, what was it called? Uh, it was based on the P51 Mustang, uh, but it had this some similar uh, sort of design cues, uh, the same um, steering, uh, not steering wheel, but hubcap sort of uh, pivot and a similar sort of profile on the top of the blade. So you, you were seeing a, a style emerge from Casey Spirion and, uh, and his designs, his knife designs. And it's cool to see. I like seeing that. Um, I've drawn a million knives in my day, and I don't know if I have a style. Uh, I don't think I have an emergent style. I think we can see one already in KC. So uh, very excited about this knife, and I'm excited to get my own once this is fully funded and goes into production. If you like it, if you like KC, be sure to go to the Tempest Knives website and uh, check it out. Get on the pre-order. Uh, they are um, similar to Dam Designs. Uh, Damn Designs came out with the first, uh, his first stuff early on, all uh, titanium, expensive steel, uh, high-end manufacturing. His second go of knives, he decided, hang on a second, people don't know me, I would rather put out a number of designs and uh, put them out in lower, in more budget-friendly materials, and people would be more readily willing to spend money and buy my knife they don't know me. I'm an unknown quantity. Uh, they'd be warm, more willing to spend a hundred bucks on me than 250 or 300. And I think that's a smart, uh, a smart way to go about it. And I, and I think that's what Casey's doing here. He had, uh, his, his first knife was all titanium and, and I think it was 20 CV and, uh, there was difficulty getting that, that production funded. I have a feeling this one will be different because, the materials are more within reach to more people. And if you like his design style and this looks well, I know now that it's more than just looks like it. This is an outstanding utility knife and it's great on the fidget, great on the fidget factor. So I think he's got a winner here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rooting for you, Casey. And uh, this is a this is a cool knife. I can't wait to get mine in black micarta. OK, next up. <clears throat> state and union which is sort of like hmm, the lexus to k bar uh to to, to k bar's toyota if you will it's a it's kind of a uh an, an offshoot brand that makes some exclusive and really nice uh kind of side project knives at k bar well they are releasing uh something they're calling the special red spacer dog head k bar and uh i, I mean it I'm not going to be getting this knife, but I would really like to get this knife. Uh, this will probably be a hard one to get your hands on. But that red spacer between the, by the way, pretty thick for a K bar crossbar quillion um, and the stacked leather handle guard is a, a tip of the hat to an old um, run of K bars that are extremely collectible to people who collect World War II K bars um that were made with a red spacer just in that position so uh state and union is making this special uh red space and this is one of the dog head k bars i gave a dog head k bar away uh in one of the gentleman junkie giveaways it, it did have a different guard an asymmetrical guard and an asymmetrical pommel 
so slightly different. But this thing, I mean, anyone who's watching and not listening who can look at this can has to recognize this as possibly the sweetest looking K bar they've ever laid eyes on. Uh, I would, yeah, this would be a cool one to have. It's a it's a hot two hundred bucks, and uh, sometimes it's uh, difficult to. Sp I shouldn't say this because uh, I love them so much, and I've done this many many times. But sometimes you expect to spend more money on folders because of all the mechanisms and that kind of thing. Uh, two hundred bucks is not inexpensive, but man, that's a collectible one. So uh, anyway, check it out. State and Union with their uh, Red Spacer Special Dog Head Fixed Bladed Knife which I'm just going to call a really cool K-Bar. All right, uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a couple of new knives here, a couple, or uh, one new knife and a couple on loan. And then we're going to take a look at fullers and opening holes right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so that you can be off of those tenter hooks. Here it is. This is the... Pinion by Tempest Knives. Uh, this just came in yesterday. Uh, I call that good on the fidget. The knife is, I'm not. This is left-handed. Let me try that again. Okay, so this is the, there it is. Tempest Knives Pinion. And that blade shape, I got to say, it is a little, at first I was like, oh, I don't know about that blade shape. Um, that hump right towards the thumb. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I do know how I feel about that now. Uh, you know what I was originally thinking? I was looking, that that looks like the carrying handle of an M16. So, uh, oh gosh, you'll don't, don't judge it by my left-handed deployment. Here you go. I was playing with this thing all day. And uh, so this actually was also a bit of a, an emotional support knife, I must say, because it got a, a heck of a lot of use. Um, so... This is what uh, KC's got coming out, man. So you got the um, you got the Tempest logo right up here by the opening hole. You've got a very nice opening hole that's got that reset or that inset uh, area, which I think looks really cool. Uh, you can use it as a slow roll. You can use it as a you can thumb flick it out. You can finger flick it out, which is man, that's the best. That comes out just perfectly. And then it drops. This is a free dropper. And uh, I think I showed Casey that you can also you can also flip it <laughs> if you really want to. If you can get your fingernail in there, you can flip it. I know that's not an intended thing, but it's a fun addition. Uh, you've got that rounded, very nice rounded spring clip. And uh, I believe he has made that so that some of the aftermarket clips that are made that are not spring clips like that, but are made to fit in the, um, in the opening or, or in the accommodation for them will fit here. Uh, and you know, this is a prototype and he has a quite a list of things that are going to change, but based on this, um, man, I love it. I love it based on just looking at it and watching a couple of other videos. I got on the pre-order, but now that I have it in hand, I'm really psyched about it. One thing I do remember seeing from the list of things that he's going to change, all which will uh, be mentioned in my video about this, uh, and this I think is a good move um, right here. You can see there is some space between that backspacer and the tip of the blade. He wants to have them extend it as much as it can. Um, so it looks like he'll get an extra... I don't know, uh, eighth of an inch in there or something. And, you know, it seems like it's not a lot, but it is actually when you consider the difference between a, you know, some of your favorite blades and the difference between uh, 3.125 and 3.5. It's quarter inch, Bob. I know, but but how different it seems at just a quarter inch uh, also translates to eighth of an inch. There you go. I think I just won my argument with myself. All right, so what do you guys think of this? This is the Pinion by Tempest Knives. Go check out uh, the Knives Fast channel. Um, KC does a number of videos about this knife, and uh, and you can also see his other knife there. It's a very cool knife. Um, and like I said, you can sort of uh, track 
his design style at, just by looking at those two knives. Uh, ergonomically, excellent. Uh, action, excellent. Uh, I think that this is an excellent utility knife. Look at that tip. It's perfect. And it's got a nice little bit of belly here just, just for that. I don't know, man. Uh, when it comes to a... I, I keep saying man today. I'm sorry if you're a woman. But when it comes to a point like this, I love it, but sometimes I almost feel like it's too delicate, like I am going to round it off just through use. So doing something like this gives you the benefit of a point much like this, but also gives it a little bit of cushion just with that curve. Uh, so nice design, Casey, and very excellent execution. Uh, I, Like I said, right as I talk, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk about the OEM, but I'll mention it in my video. By the way, inset liner lock, very nice. Got weight relief on one side and uh, no chamfering on that lock. And it feels good. Feels good. All right. That is the pinion, Tempest Knives. Next up, this one's all mine. This is one that uh, I've been saving up for and waiting for and waited for it to become legal and just hoped it wasn't going to get uh, sold out on um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. It's the only place I could find it. And, uh, well, wouldn't you know, it's a little too big for most people. So it, it stayed there and I was able to buy it. And that is the Heretic Manticore X. That means big. <laughs> this is the big one. This is the four-inch bladed uh, Heretic out the front. And I love it. And this one has a very special blade. It's got that gorgeous recurve blade. It is so nice. It reminds me a little bit of a, a, bit of a Walter Brend fixed blade knife. Um, but just a, any sort of recurve like that where you have a, um, a hollow ground swedge and a hollow ground uh, primary uh, bevel and super sharp this thing is amazingly sharp shares a lot of characteristics with uh with my microtech um ultratex and combat or and troodon i don't have the combat and then in some ways uh departs from it in good ways and in some ways departs in i'm still deciding ways um but this button is pretty cool knurled on top stepped jaggedly uh, not jaggedly but stepped uh sharply and you get great positive action out. This is on bearings. So this, um, what do you call this? Sliding actuator, I'm going to call it. The sliding actuator is on bearings. So it rolls back and forth on bearings and, and has a different sort of smoother feel to me than, than my Microtex. It does have a little bit more of a... Uh, rattle than my microtex and you can't hear it because i'm not i'm not slashing it through the air pretending i'm jason Bourne right now but it does have a little bit more rattle of the guts and i know that's something we can expect from out the fronts uh, most of the time unless it's a, a hawk you know deadlock but this seems just a little louder and i'm not sure if it's because it's bigger but it's stout and solid and it's mine and i love it uh and i can now carry it legally and i have been since i've gotten it today was my my first day uh not carrying it and uh you know like i said i kind of went in the opposite direction with that uh, a2d mark one aluminum body fluted nicely blasted it doesn't have that um it doesn't feel like a protec it doesn't have that chalky feel which uh i like uh this feels nice too uh but but not uh not like that other kind not sure i'm unresolved on the jimping there's like sort of this semi jimping on the sides and it's pretty good it's like i don't know i i you know what i really like the way uh sharp jimping feels milled into aluminum the way microtech does it on their aluminum knives or the way protect does it on theirs and it's a full groove going all the way through and it's sharp on the edges and it just it feels good and it feels uh solid in hand these uh i uh, you know i have not felt uh, really you were you're with this knife <laughs> sorry with this knife you are relying on the thumb button 
primarily to stop you from going forward. That and that super acute and sharp point and sinuous blade. Um, trusting that that goes in smoothly to whatever you're pushing it into and you're bracing enough with your thumb on there. This jimping down here shouldn't matter much, though I must say I would like it going all the way across. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, Manticore, or I'm sorry, um, Heretic Clip. This one relatively tame. Uh, reminds me of a little bit of an elephant, uh, but relatively tame. I've seen other ones that are a little more spread out and kind of meh. Not not to my liking anyway. Uh, right here in the in the pommel, you have a nice ball bearing for breaking glass, but you can still it's still comfortable to to cap it with your thumb if you needed to use this uh, in this reverse grip. Uh, you know, say if you're working, um, you know, on the border, and someone's driving through with a bunch of fake canisters of oil 55 gallon drums say and they're filled with contraband weapons and you need to open them up and you need to use that sort of grip this will do beautifully you don't have any problem with that glass breaker try that with your combat troodon try that with your utx uh, because they're just a little bit sharper on those uh on those um, glass breakers i love this knife this manticore i would like to check out other knives from heretic um and, and actually, primarily, more Manticore Xs uh, in different blade shapes. They have a really cool Bowie and a really cool Tonto. Uh, okay, lastly, in the state of the collection, this also on loan, this is the new Pratheon. It's the new knife by Arcane Designs. Sorry about my left hand today, people. Uh, this knife is on pre-order right now. I believe it's... Jeez, I should have checked. I'm pretty sure this one is actually in production at this point. Uh, but this is a prototype. And uh, what a great, beautiful, handsome, cool knife this is. Uh, <clears throat> Israel Bacchus of Arcane Design uh, has a very definite style. And this fits right into it. Uh, everything from that semi-angular handle, which actually feels great in hand, uh, to the inlay the interestingly shaped inlay, the somewhat futuristic profile, uh, and that, man, that blade. I love that clip point blade. So beautiful. Uh, he's got two types of jimping here. He has jimping for the thumb uh, when cutting uh, up there on that thumb ramp, and then jimping for, yes, the front flipper. It's got a great front flipping action and great uh, jimping, fine jimping there to to actually get purchase, thumb purchase, or finger purchase. Um, this knife is wide enough for me to do that, uh, that sort of technique that I don't have a knife in my hand, huh? Oh, technique, and you sort of flip it open <clears throat> with your forefinger. Sometimes that works, other times it hurts like hell. So I, I don't have enough front flippers or front flipping experience to be sure sure as, as, uh, as can be with it, but anyway. Uh, I do like the clip on this thing. Very cool because he's given you something like a sculpted clip, but he's also given you something like a bent wire clip. And it's reversible. Very, very, very nice design. Reversible, just take out that screw. It's a symmetrical design. Fits over here on exactly the same spot. Uh, that little cutout in the um, in, inset uh G10 there fits the contour perfectly. And it's, I think it's really cool. It's a very elegant solution to the supplying clippage to lefties as well as righties, but also making the clip something special, not just a cheesy kind of spring clip. And don't get me wrong, I love cheesy spring clips. But uh, hey, man, if you can make the spring clip less cheesy and look more sculpted like this. I say you go for it. And also, someone else mentioned this. Um, it doesn't loop all the way over so that your pants material goes past the G10 and gets stuck in that little void, that little area uh, where the clip is curving into the G10. You don't have that problem with this. The Pratheon, I have not used it yet. This is S35VN uh, and G10. And then there's, uh, it's for 200 bucks, there is a... Um, all titanium version for 350 i believe and then one 
with like Mokutai and Damasteel and all the serious works for 650. So check it out. You like uh, Israel's designs, you like arcane designs. This is uh, definitely, um, at least at this price point and this setup uh, of materials, uh, a great kind of go-to EDC. It so far is, uh, and I've only had it a day, but it's just, it feels great. I haven't used it for anything yet. I got to be honest, but I have a, a feeling it's going to do fantastically. And I'll fill you in on Thursday Night Knives. All right, so that is the Pratheon from Arcane Design, a cool, cool knife. Well, you may have noticed uh, before when I was showing off the Tempest Knives pinion, I was having trouble with the uh, flicking, with the finger flicking of the knife <clears throat> with my left hand. So I think I'm going to be turning this way a lot for this next segment because I want to talk to you about fullers and opening holes. Fullers are something that I've discovered recently, I must admit. I mean, I've always known of fullers and they've always been there, but only recently have I considered them. Have they been in my life as an alternate opening method? And I have to, I have to say, I love it. A spidey flick off a good fuller is a very gratifying uh, way of opening a knife. And uh, if you're fidgeting, it's a, it's a, it's a bomb diggity for, for, for fidgeting. All right, let's take a look at the first one. This is the Vostid Bellamy. This gives you three ways of opening the knife. Uh, you have your flipper tab there. You have your front flipper there. But really, it's that fuller that kills it. That fuller is small. And uh, until this knife, I believe, every fuller I looked at, I was like, that's too small. How do, how do people actually flip it open using that small little fuller but really all you need is space for your fingernail to get in um yeah just a little little whoop so there i don't do it a little space to get your finger in there now it's a lot easier i i contest it's a lot easier with a liner lock because you're not worried about pressing down the lock bar like you would be with a um with a uh, line, with a frame lock. Sorry, I got distracted there trying to middle finger flick this thing uh, with the fuller. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so very, very nice knife. I love this knife. I mean, if you guys don't know um, or haven't watched any videos on the Bellamy, um, check mine out for sure. And then there are a lot of others. Uh, and everyone seems to agree this thing is awesome. I mean, all you got to do is is get one in hand. It is super, incredibly smooth, uh, very, very sharp. It's got a hollow ground, very attractive hollow ground and thin behind the edge clip point blade. I mean, there's, there is a lot to like here. It, to me, it's not the greatest front flipper, but it's, but I feel like I'm getting better at it. So, uh, and then it's got this awesome, cross not cross cut end cut i think it's called carbon fiber so it's carbon fiber and very light but it doesn't have that carbon fiber look uh that i don't like <clears throat> vostid cutlery uh first i knew them for their morgan chef knife that they sent me and they said hey we have this folder and i was like oh yes because i had just seen a uh, neve i think video uh, neve's knives video on that uh next up is I got to say, this is one of my favorite designs of the past year. I've carried this one even more so than the full titanium quite a bit, and I love it. And this is the Preta 2 from Concept, and it's designed by our good friend K. Maxrom from uh, France, Fran Francais, right? from France. And uh, what a great guy, Jonathan uh, Jonathan Renaudin. We had him on the show. Uh, he was really fun to talk to. I like his uh, design philosophy. I've been following that guy for a long time on Instagram, sort of um, tracking the progress of his work. That sounds that sounds pretty high handed, but uh, yeah, I've been following him for a long time and kind of seeing how his work has evolved, and then and then sort of watching him go into uh, production licensing with companies like Kaiser and Concept. Uh, is exciting because I always thought his custom knives, his little custom knives he's making over in France. I think he lives in the Pyrenees. Um, I always thought they were really cool. So to see him kind of go big uh, and mainstream was very gratifying. Uh, a real 
um, signature design cue for him is this uh, swale there on the back of the blade for your thumb or or for aesthetics or for trapping or for whatever. But also you will find fullers in his work and uh, right here in, in the most satisfying way. Now, I mentioned before uh, that the fuller on the Bellamy, I thought was going to be too small to use as a flicker, as a finger flicker. And uh, if you look at this, it's also relatively small, but by comparison, much larger. And uh, this, you feel the difference. Uh, there is less chance of failure, less chance of not getting your finger in that somewhat large or larger fuller. Um, so, and I'm going to be talking about opening holes too. And opening holes are uh, differ from, uh, I'm not talking about round opening holes. I'm talking more like slots. They kind of have that same, um, effect, uh, as a fuller, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so large, nice fuller, uh, but this also has, uh, thumb studs, which work great. The flipper is great. This knife, uh, I think I even like it, like I said, better than the full titanium version, which is pretty darn sweet. I gotta say, uh, super smooth and everything else, but um lately i've been coming back towards liner locks as as a desirable as a very desirable setup for a knife um for the opening ease of opening and closing and um yeah fidget is through the roof too all right next up is from another good friend uh designer here this is from kombu and this is his uh ornetta and it has recently come out in G10. And this one uh, was graciously gifted me uh, to me by Bestech. I uh, love this thing, man. Uh, so I've, I've had a couple of Ornettas here. Uh, I reviewed two Ornettas uh, from them, both very positively. One, The first one actually was the new G10 version when it first uh, dropped a bunch of months back. And then recently they sent me the all titanium version, the original uh, Ornetta and the first design Kombu had produced with Best Tech. Now, Kombu is exclusive. He's a knife designer only. He doesn't make them and he designs exclusively for Best Tech. So, uh, interesting position and an enviable, maybe not enviable because I want him to have it, but I, I would like to have that too. You know, it's like an enviable position. And uh, because the designs that they take of his, and that they license and and make into knives, he knows are going to be built to the to the to the nines. I mean, Best Tech, I think they are awesome. I think they are really, really. I don't know. I think they're making their way up to the very tip top. I I just think they're awesome. And I hear some people gritting their teeth and saying, "Oh, it's it's Riot like it." And and I know, and I know, and Riot is awesome. And there is a difference, you know at least between say this uh g10 and d2 best tech and a riad but when you're looking at a full dress titanium and high-end steel production from best tech you're looking at a knife that can compete with riad i think and i think they have a pretty wide repertoire too which is which is cool so this knife here i've just been sitting here flipping but really, what I want to talk about is, again, the fuller. The fuller here goes really deep. And, man, you can you can get just your, the fat of your, whoops. You can get just the fat of your thumb in there or the fat of your forefinger in there and open it up. I'm not sure if, if you can see how deep that runs. Uh, but the blade up up at the top is somewhat thick, thins out a lot beneath the fuller and comes to a pretty thin geometry behind the edge. So fullers can do that too. They can really um, reduce the width of the blade um, on the other side. And actually, I have a very good example of that, and I should have pulled it out tonight. Uh, my um, That Russian knife, uh, the, the Crystal Aurora, has an interesting fuller setup, but I don't use the fuller to open the knife. And that's uh, that's kind of what this conversation is about. Opening hole on this one uh, can be used uh, to slow roll. 
the blade open like that and you can get your four your your flick in there you can even flick it with your thumb or at least i've been able to yeah there we go uh because it's kind of sharp and it's very deep so these are some um desirable attributes for a fuller you want you want the edge of that fuller to be sharp enough to grab some of your flesh or to grab your fingernail and you want it to be deep enough I, I mean, ideally, you want it deep enough so that your finger fat can get in there and you can just open it up with your finger fat <laughs> instead of your your fingernail. OK, I'm moving on to the Sencut Bronte. This is this is one of my favorite forty dollar knives ever. Um, I got it because, well, look at it. It's beautiful. It's got such a simple look, but such a beautiful sort of dow blade or what is that like a downward i don't know what that is sort of a clip point blade sort of a worn cliff blade it's uh it could be a number of things but i do know i love the point i love the long almost straight cutting edge and the angle from from which it presents itself from the handle which is two parallel lines i love that but I got it also because it's a front flipper and I wanted a front flipper. This I think I only had one at the time. I wanted a different one. This one has really broken in nicely and it needed breaking in. I was surprised. I thought being a send cut, it would be like all the Civivis I've ever had and that it would be like Insta smooth. It would be smooth right out of the box. This one wasn't, this one had to be earned. <laughs> so uh, emotional support knife, uh, you know, who rescued who really? I think that's that's the question when it comes to this knife. Uh, the the fuller is perfect. Not only is it perfectly uh, executed for fingernail or finger fat there for the opening, but it's also deep and it's tall ish, reasonably so. And the shape of the blade presents it at an upward angle. So it's 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 ever easier to grab. You can you can do it way down here and flip it open or you can do it way up towards the front whoops and get it open and anywhere in between you can slow roll it using that uh using that fuller just a great knife i think this is nine yeah nine cr 13 nine cr 18 mov i'm not sure it's nine cr and uh <clears throat> send cut we is known for doing their nine cr very well speaking of civivi uh here's another one this is the keen natter and this like uh, some of the others here also has multiple ways of opening it you've got the flipper tab you've got the thumb stud but most pertinent to this conversation you also have a fuller and that is the best way to open this knife is that fuller there's something gratifying about putting your thumb fat or your finger fat in there and just kind of casually flipping your wrist. Of course, you don't need wrist. Not in the age of ball bearings. No wrist needed. But it feels good. It just it feels good to do. Yeah, I'm here. I'm ready for work. I'm ready for action. And uh, it just sort of comes out. Uh, Civivi, this, uh, this Civivi Keen Natter was a gift from Dave. This old sword blade reviews. Thank you, Dave. I love this thing. And uh, yeah, I do like to flip it. And yes, I do like to slow roll it with that thumb stud, but my favorite way to open it is with that fuller. This was one of my first uh, fully operational fuller knives. Uh, so I have Dave to thank for that too. Uh, that really nice natural tan canvas micarta has, has really soaked up my funk and looks great, especially next to that gray sort of uh, dark tumbled finish on this flat ground and hollow ground recurve tanto okay next is this one has a, a kind of a frustrating fuller and i think that's a new category uh this is the microtech socom bravo and if you look at it it's got an or if you're listening just look at it in your mind's eye you know what it looks like because there's a million videos on this beautiful knife but it's got that big exotic looking fuller along the top and it's got a nice ridge on the top that would be excellent for grabbing that finger flesh and uh, flipping that blade open. But the only bit of that big, gorgeous 
glorious fuller that they give you to use for opening is that. And that is completely unintentional. So they, they did not mean that to be used as an opening fuller. I mean, you can easily use the uh, thumb stud if you, if you want that sort of reverse flicking action. The thumb stud works great. They're giant. By the way, they're also the blade stop. But uh, they're giant. You don't, you don't need the fuller. But I see fuller. I want to use fuller. So uh, I, I didn't think it was possible. And then I saw someone else, can't remember who it was, online doing it, saying, eh, it's a little hard, but yeah, you can totally do it. I think maybe it was Stasa. I was like, oh, all right. So I, I tried it, and yeah, you can. But it's the most ungratifying fuller action ever because every time you do it, you're wondering, is it going to work this time? Is it going to work this time? Like, have I jammed enough in there to create enough pressure to pop this blade? And uh, a lot of the times when you're trying to use that fuller, you're just cheating. You're pushing off with the thumb stud too. So a vestigial fuller, at least in terms of for opening, I guess for uh, as a blood gutter so that pressure doesn't build up in your in your foe as you're shiving them, maybe. But, um, you know, for opening, not so much. But what a beautiful knife. Look at this thing. Just gorgeous. Okay, so now now we're we're moving into the vents. I, I this, this is a word I've heard recently, opening vent. And it was I think it was a term used because what the hell are you going to call the shape? These all have different shapes. If it's not a Spiderco uh um you know, uh, registered trademark circular round opening hole, then it's some other weird shape. Um lozenge sometimes works, but that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue neither does vent but i get what they mean so i'm still going to call it an opening hole all right so but this is more of a vent because let's look at the shape look at the shape of that that's not a hole i mean it is a hole and it's a hole in the blade and but it's also long and i don't know i could see why someone would would call it something other than a hole <laughs> but in any case it works great it, with this on this Kubi Vagrant, oh my gosh, this thing works great with that with that uh, reverse flick, and that has really become a. Um, you can also use it for the thumb, and you can also slow roll uh, using that vent. Uh, but that reverse flick has really legitimized itself uh, over time because people are making knives to accommodate it, and and not just enthusiast knives like um, like like Casey's Tempest uh, knives or, or so many of the other knives by enthusiasts that we all know and love who are designing their own knives. Well, we all know that they've been spidey flicking forever, but did the knife companies know that, you know? So now the knife companies know that because they've been watching enough of our videos and they're designing the knives to be spidey flicked as well as every, uh, every other way. And um, I think that's great. This Kubi Vagrant, man, Kubi is awesome, I got to say. Uh, they surprised me. I always thought they were a little bit, I, I just assumed they were a little bit cheesy, honestly, from the cost, the price of their knives, and the logo. The logo is like this weird skull with a beret and headphones, and I don't know. The logo is a little off to me, but, man, the knives are incredible. They're so well made. Awesome, like, detents, awesome action on these things. Really, like, Action that you would expect on a much higher end knife uh, is on these little $40, in general, $40 knives. Uh, this one, the Vagrant, comes in a million different colors and two different uh, blade shapes. This is the Warncliffe, and it also has comes in a sheep's foot, a little bit more rounded off uh, profile on the spine. And uh, these are in Aus 10, great action, on bearings, uh, all the rest of it. And uh, just work beautifully. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this here and move on to, let us see. Where is it? Here it is. Vero Engineering. Now, speaking of enthusiasts who design knives. Now, he didn't start off as a YouTuber. Uh, he, Joseph Vero is an engineer, and he's designed some pretty... Uh, interesting drone things for certain interesting agencies and that kind of stuff. He designed himself and built his his own electric motorcycle. Uh, he's just kind of a brilliant dude. And uh, 
Thank, thankfully, he turned his brilliance to designing knives. And this is my one Vero knife. This is the Synapse. One of my one of my favorite flippers and definitely a big um, emotional support knife. This one gets a lot of use just, just for fidget. This one gets a lot of fidget uh, because it is so wickedly dr drop shut smooth. Um, feels good in the hand with that, with that canvas micarta. Has one of these awesome flippers. This is my favorite kind of flipper right here. Barely there. Super low profile. Love that. Um, and then that translates into a platform down here where you can choke up. Uh, very thinly ground, beautiful. Um, this is a best tech made knife, beautiful uh, machine satin. And you can see those grind lines, which is so pleasing to me. Very sharp internal stop pin, which I love. And <clears throat> this has the old bummer clip on it, uh, the clip that you feel in your hand. But if I'm choked up like this, which is how I would use this knife anyway, I, I'm never going to use this knife in saber grip. It's just not in the cards. Uh, but if I'm up here using it like this, I feel it, but it kind of nestles between the metatarsals of these two fingers. You like how I use that word? I broke one once. That's how I know that word. Uh, it fits right in there, nestles in there somewhat and uh feels all right though uh he really made an improvement when he tipped down that tip a little bit of that clip i would say that's the one design flaw i've ever discovered on this knife maybe it's a little no this isn't that i was thinking it was sharp right here this one isn't super smooth action and a bolster lock who doesn't love a bolster lock but bob why are we looking at this knife for this list well look at that you didn't see that from that side, did you? You didn't see that from the from the show side. That's a little pocket milled halfway deep into the uh, into the blade. You don't see it on this side. Put exclusively there for knife nerds. Exclusively there for knife nerds who are going to see it and be like, "Oh, that is so I can do this." Uh, it is there for spidey flicking, or it is there for middle finger flicking. I shouldn't use spidey flick. When I'm not talking about a spider co. But that is probably the most gratifying way to open this knife. And yes, just the fat of your thumb works, or I tend to use the four uh the the fingernail on this one. Um, but that's the first time I ever saw that, and I thought it was ingenious, and I told him so, and I thought that was cool. That was one of the first bits of evidence that. When an enthusiast designs a knife, uh, you get some interesting and cool stuff. And what I mean by that is, like, uh, like to the mo at the, uh, very current stuff. Like this, when he started doing this, uh, I feel like that was a very current move. Whereas a big company might take a while to to bring something trendy to market, he was able to pop that in there and uh, really take advantage of the fact that everyone loves to spidey flick you know, explicitly, uh, petrified fish did the same thing a couple of years later, biters, huh? Get it. Petrified fish, fish biting. This is a Victor. This is the coolest petrified fish ever. I think it is so beautiful. I mean, it is right there next to the beluga. Actually, the beluga is what I was looking for, but then I stumbled on this and you know, I love Bowie's, but look at that. You flip it over. And there's a vent again, a divot, if you will, something milled in halfway or a quarter of the way or a third of the way or whatever into that blade, just enough to give your the, the finger fat or your fingernail purchase to, to flip that thing open. And being a petrified fish, this is an absolute drop shut guillotine. And it's got a pretty thick and heavy blade also, so that aids in the action in, in both the opening and the closing. Um, but that that fuller there is just, I mean, that opening vent there is just so perfect. So perfect. Perfectly shaped, positioned, and long enough. You know, it goes far enough down the blade, you can you can kind of choose your spot and choose your action of you know where you where you end up flipping along this along this line here. This is a great knife. I highly recommend it. It's in K110. 
um, which is analogous to D2. And it is in canvas micarta. In this case, blue jean micarta, denim micarta. Had to get it. Okay, last up, I, I wanted to pay homage to the just the plain lozenge shaped opening hole the, the oval opening hole so so it's this it is the strider smf or any strider um or any knife that has that style hole um you know you could even talk about uh the growler coming out by devo knives it's not even out yet and and they have a similar sort of uh, opening hole but this this is the kind of hole that is approaching uh, this, this sort of vent here, longer than just a, uh, a circle and gives you a little bit more space so you can almost choose your action by where you choose to, to engage with that opener. Um, great for, in this case, slow roll, flick with the thumb, flip with the, with the, uh, for, with the uh, other finger, reverse side, and I figured Strider is one of those emblematic brands and designs, and I think they took early advantage of the non-circular opening vent. Very, very nice to open up. Okay, so there you go, people. These are my favorite uh, opening hole, opening vent, and uh, fuller knives, and... It's becoming something that is showing up in a lot of the knives I draw and in a lot of the knives that I'm looking at. I keep I keep kind of finding myself coming back to these fullers. So uh, what do we have here? We have the Vostid Bellamy. We have the Concept Predator. We have the Ornetta by Best Tech. We have the Sencut Bronte. The Keen Natter by Civivi. The Socom Bravo. That's a Microtech. The Kubi Vagrant. The Synapse by Vero Engineering. The Petrified Fish Victor. And the Strider. SMF. Fullers and opening holes, people. Going deep in the fullers and opening holes. What's your favorite knife with a fuller or opening hole? Let me know. And is that opening hole long or is it circular? If it's circular, I'm not counting it, even though it works. All right. Uh, join us on Sunday for Matthew Christensen. He will be back on the show. Christensen Knife Works. Uh, he's got the thug out. He's got the critical with Kaiser out. They have the Thug XL coming out. You didn't hear that here. You will hear that first on Sunday. So join us on Sunday with Matthew Christensen. What a great guy. Also, tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives. Check us out and come uh, be a part of our, our of our fun and our conversation. All right. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for watching the show. And until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.